we will all miss her. Those are some of the headlines. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. We're on the road in San Francisco. For our first segment today, a pivotal battle over public education here in the state of California. The governing body of the UC system, the Board of Regents, is set to vote on a major tuition hike for both undergraduate and graduate students. Undergraduate tuition would rise an average 32 percent, while some graduate schools would begin charging thousands of dollars for programs that are currently tuition-free. The regents are also expected to approve a new round of layoffs, furloughs and other spending cuts. The regents are meeting Thursday at UCLA, where students from across the state are converging for what organizers have dubbed a crisis fest, including mass protests, civil disobedience and teach-ins. Here in the Bay Area, students and university workers at UC Berkeley have called a three-day strike that begins on Wednesday. Two unions, the University Professional and Technical Employees and Coalition of University Employees, will be walking off the job to protest what they call the UC system's unfair labor practices. Dozens of faculty members have also signed on to support the strike. For more, we're joined by four guests who've been involved in the cause for affordable and accessible education at the UC University of California Schools. Ananya Roy is professor in the Department of City and Regional Planning at UC Berkeley. She is canceling her classes to take part in this week's strike. Laura Nader is a professor of social cultural anthropology at UC Berkeley, where she's taught for nearly 50 years. Earlier this year, she co-authored a measure approved by the UC Berkeley Academic Senate calling on the school's athletics program to become self-sufficient and stop receiving subsidies from student fees. Blanca Mize is with us, UC Berkeley graduate student and organizer with the Student Worker Action Team, and Michael Cohen, a lecturer at American Studies at UC Berkeley and co-chair of the Solidarity Alliance, which issued the call for this week's strike. We welcome you all to Democracy Now! Um, this is a major uh, situation that has developed across California, instructive for everyone. I want to begin with Ananya Roy. Roth, if you can lay out the situation. Well, I think there is a very real crisis in California, where continuing budget cuts have devastated the infrastructure of public education. And we have a governor who continues to call for deeper and deeper budget cuts, even though there is nothing left to cut. So we're clearly fighting for the ideal of public education. We're fighting for the opportunity of Californians and Americans to get a decent education. But we're also fighting for the future of our particular university, the UC system, and we're fighting to be represented by leaders who believe in and can defend the mission of public education. I think what has been quite unique about the struggle is the coming together of students, faculty and workers to do so. This particular moment before us is one where students face unprecedented fee hikes. And this is very much, therefore, also a student strike, students fighting for their own future and for the future of the next generation of students. Blanca Mies, can you talk about um, the kind of organizing that the students are doing right now? Yes, yeah, so um, students begin organizing in the summer uh, with the workers against the cuts. Um, but they start really organizing when the school started at the end of August. And the kind of organizing is very diverse because um, it represents a diversity in our campus. Uh, we have uh, we started general assemblies where all the students can come, discuss, and vote together what they want to do in a democratic way. Um, and this assembly is called for the 24th walkout and endorsed the call of the strike of the unions, of the grad students, but we're also working with other groups that were organizing in the university for years that have been dismissed by the administration of the university for years, especially the, the groups of the students of color that have been fighting against the racist procedures of the university, uh, where the majority of a student of community of color is excluded. Uh, from our university, we have only like 1% of Native Americans and 3% of African Americans. So all these groups are getting into this fight against the budget cuts, and we are calling to go on strike these three days. Um, many things are 
prepared for these three days. The, one of the big, the most important part will be cancelling the classes and having the students walking out and participating in rallies and actions. But we're also going to organize with the faculty these alternative university teachings, uh, thinking what will be the university of the future, what kind of public university we want to see in our campus. Um, what was the September 24th uh, walkout follow-up? What happened then? So after the walkout that uh, gathered 5,000 people in Sprawl, uh, we host uh, an assembly with all the students that want to get involved. And we've been meeting um, like uh, every week, uh, all the undergrads and grad students. But we also try to contact all the other student groups and try to organize even by buildings. For example, the buildings of social sciences and humanities have host uh, building meetings and teachings. So we can build like base solidarity with the lecturers and the staff that have been laid off in our departments. Uh, we can hear from the unions. We can hear um, from the faculty who want to talk also about um, how they see the university changing and what kind of university they would like to have. And um, basically, we've, and also we have been doing outreach to the rest of sectors of public education. Uh, one of the major efforts after the walkout was to organize the education conference, uh, mobilizing conference on October 24th, one month later, uh, at UC Berkeley, that gathered 800 students and teachers and workers from public education, because we want to do this fight together. As Ananya said, we are also hit by this crisis of the state of California, but we're not the only ones. And we don't want the state to divide us again, to say we have to take money from the community colleges to give to the UCs, or give, take money to the UCs to give to the Cal States. We want to be united in this fight. So we started also the dialogue with other sectors. Michael Cohen, education. what is the Solidarity Alliance? The Solidarity Alliance grew out of a, initially a faculty uh, project of protesting the seizure of emergency powers by UC President Mark Udoff. Uh, they began to uh, coalesce and discuss some possible responses and began an effort to reach out to other constituencies on campus. Um, as soon as uh, the unions on the campus learned that there were faculty interested in joining CAUSE, uh, the Solidarity Alliance grew rapidly and into uh, a sizable organization that represents all the heads of the local unions on campus. Um, most of the uh, student groups of one kind, including the ASUC, which is the student government bodies, but also uh, the Bridges Recruitment and Retention Centers, the Students of Color organizations, uh, the General Assembly and SWAT are also members. Uh, and group members of individual members of the organization SAVE, which is the faculty group, are, uh, have joined us. And we are a consortium, or we are an alliance of individual groups that have come together because we understand that in solidarity and joining common cause, we have strength enough to fight this, that the university's typical procedures are to divide the faculty from the workers and to divide the workers from the students and to divide uh, the students from the faculty. And as long as the three groups remain strong and are show their solidarity with one another, we represent a formidable force on campus. And so we have believed that we have the strength and the position to call for this strike, and many have joined us, and it is spread to the entire UC system. And we believe that not only at UC Berkeley do we are we strong, but we, as Blanca said, we need to expand beyond. I think we recognize quite clearly that uh, much uh, the propensity for some uh, folks at Berkeley is to seek a special dispensation, to uh, seek a kind of exceptionalism that UC Berkeley, you know, uh, is the crown jewel of the UC system. And we uh, recognize the special place of Berkeley, but we're also very alive to the fact that the farther you get away from the steps on Sproul Plaza, the harder things are. And that in the community colleges and the, the Cal State system, things are, in fact, far worse. And that UC Berkeley and the entire UC system has a special responsibility to um, join the debate on behalf of public education statewide and, if possible, to lead, but at uh, a certain point to start the conversation in a very aggressive way. And if we have achieved anything in the, with the walkout on the 24th and with this strike, we have certainly forged a strong alliance between workers, faculty, and students, which is something that has never happened at the history of UC Berkeley. We've always been successfully uh, divided. 
but also that we have begun a serious conversation about what the value and purpose of public higher education is, to restore this question of what role does the public play in all of this, and what is it about Berkeley that marks it as, uh, and the UC system in general, that marks it as different, as special, something that needs to be both preserved and transformed, expanded, even in the conditions of this severe economic crisis. Public education is needed more now than ever.